too much pressure on Bateman? First question came from my guy Jalen. He said, what's up, Engraven? Hope all is good with you and the family. My question is, do you think there is too much pressure being put on Rashad Bateman? With the lack of proven receivers, at least unproven for now, it seems that the entire faith in the passing game is being put on how good he can be as the wide receiver one. If he's great, it changes everything. But if he's just okay or decent, then we're back to the square one where if we can't run the ball in the playoffs, then we're screwed and it's back to finding Mark Andrews or throwing a deep ball. Thank you for your time. I, I appreciate this question. And it's a good question. Um, but is it too much pressure on Rashad Bateman? No. I, I don't think it is a lot of pressure on Rashad Bateman. And, and I would... um. I would love if they got somebody else to sort of alleviate some of the pressure. But this is what he asked for. And, and this is what he he's, he said it in the um in the Studio 44, the interview with Marlon Humphrey. He said, all right, he said Hollywood was his boy, that's his brother, but it's his time now. So it's he's accepting it. He's taking it on head on. Like straight up, he, he's he's taking everything that's coming his way, and yeah, it's it's gonna be pressure on him and Lamar to really have that connection to make some stuff happen. But he ain't running from it, so I, I wouldn't say it's too much pressure uh, for Rashad Bateman. I think we we just hope that he lives up and he delivers uh, to the pressure. Um, we just hope that everything works out and some. Uh, for him and whoever the Ravens uh, have at wide receiver, whether it's going to be the guys that they got right now, whether they add some people, whatever it's going to be. We just hope that it all works out. Uh, Rashad Bateman last year when we did see him play with Lamar Jackson, he looked good. He looked good. He looked the part. He showed a lot of promise. And it was like, oh, OK, there we go. We, we, we see him. We see Rashad Bateman. And the Ravens, they showed us from jump how much they really believed in Rashad Bateman because his first game out there, they had him on the field a lot, a whole lot. And so that, that lets you know like how much they really value Rashad Bateman as a wide receiver. So I, don't, I wouldn't say it's too much pressure. Uh, you know what? I'll say maybe it's not even quite enough. Yeah, this feels like a dream. Next question came from my guy, Gold Morano. He said, Engraven, sad note, number one, Deshaun Watson will return just in time to play against the Ravens, so we'll have to see him twice. I wouldn't say that's a sad note. I mean, for different, for, for off the field reasons, I could understand why, but for on the field reasons, just for the competition, no. No. Um, you want any team to be at their best. Uh, so with Deshaun Watson, he's going to just make the challenge that much harder. But at the same time, we don't know when he's going to come back yet because I'm recording this on August 4th at uh, 5.17 p.m. Um, and the NFL, either today or yesterday, they decided they were going to appeal uh, his six-game suspension. So we'll see what happens with that. But anyway, uh, he said number two, Debo ended all speculation over the possibility that the Costa might swoop in at the last second and make an offer that Samuel and San Francisco couldn't refuse. Uh, <laughs> I mean, throw DK on that list too. Uh, but anyway, he said making it five, well, four and a half years that Lamar will have played without that proven future Hall of Famer guy at wide receiver. Hopefully Bateman can be that. Uh, we'll see. He said, my concern, number one, if Ronnie Stanley's injury is determined to be irreparable or if his level of play declines, EDC will likely go back into the first round of the 2023 draft looking for a left tackle again instead of drafting that short-handed ball hawking 6'4", 232, I mean 230 pound, 4'4", and a 40 yak master of a wide receiver with the physical and mental makeup that will change the outcome of games. Well, wow, that's a, a really good point that you make, not even about the wide receiver part, but about Ronnie Stanley. Because depending on what happens with Ronnie Stanley, uh, it would not only have an impact on the Ravens right here, right now, but it could have an impact on them for the long term future. So we just hope not only that Ronnie Stanley comes back and he's healthy, but also that his play doesn't 
the client. So appreciate you bringing that out. He said, my question, I hope that I'm wrong, but after re-examining the schedule, I just don't see how we surpass a regular season of 10 and 7. Cleveland, Cincinnati, Miami will not be pushovers. Without that beast across from Bateman, I see two more losses to Cincy this year and at least one loss to Cleveland, possibly both. Again, I hope that I'm wrong, but those teams, including Miami, are stacked. Do you believe that Lamar's heightened motivation for a huge payday, the returns from injury, and the improvements made by EDC will be enough to reverse the damage that Cincinnati inflicted on us last year, or will we need another year of draft picks and free agent upgrades before we are ready to put up the 40 plus points necessary to beat the high powered offenses in the AFC on a consistent basis. What is our fate? And that's a really good question, especially when you put it like that, uh, when you talk about the 40 plus points necessary, hopefully. Um, and I mean, you, you can't expect the defense to be locked down every single game. Um, cause they're going to be games with a the defense. They giving up a bunch of points. I mean, we hope there wouldn't be, but it, it, it happens. It's the NFL. You ain't going to shut out everybody that you play or even shut down everybody that you play. Um, so well, can the Ravens put up a bunch of points with who they got? Yeah, they can. Now, I, I, trust me, I'm with you. I, I would love for them to get another proven guy alongside Baby and whatnot and Andrews and how like, it's seeming like likely he's going to be. Seeming like he's going to be something, but we'll see. Got to go against opposing defenses now and show it. But, um... I would love uh, that, but if not, all right, then we'll see. 10 and 7, though, I would still say, like, with what the Ravens have right now, I would, I would still say 12 and 5, um, especially because Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson. And, of course, I, I still want there to be less on his plate, um, but Lamar Jackson is such a difference maker. As we all know, he he is the difference maker for the Ravens. Um, he also said, and why is it that Deshaun Watson played in Houston and got to throw passes to a future Hall of Fame wide receiver, gets into hot water, goes to another team where he'll have yet uh, uh, more elite talent at wide receiver waiting for him, while Lamar continues to get no new toys? Mm. That's the question. Uh, that 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 is the question. I mean, Isaiah likely, though, but... As far as wide receiver, and, and he used to play wide receiver, but he's a tight end. He's a tight end. And the, the two positions are, are not the same. Um, they both catch passes, but it's just it's just different. Uh, but we'll see, man. Uh, the, the guys that the Ravens have, uh, they got a lot to prove, and that's the guys that they've drafted. Uh, like, obviously, Bateman, Prochet, Duvernay, Wallace, uh, and the guys that weren't drafted. Benjamin Victor, Shamar Bridges, Makai Pokes, Lay Bolden, whoever it's going to end up being, um, they certainly got a lot to prove. And just Ravens as a unit, uh, they got a lot to prove. Like you mentioned earlier, guys coming back from injury, they got a lot to prove. Um, so, man, we, we just got to see how it plays out. Next question came from my boy Chef Carter. He said, thanks for reading my message. I really like what I've seen at the Ravens practice. I really want the ball. I really want to pass the ball 60% of the time and run the ball on second and fourth downs. No more run first team. We really can run the ball. Um, then that doesn't mean we have to run the ball all the time. Let's open it up. Let's also talk about the DBs who are starting. Who's your nickel and dime package of players? I, I really like Geno Stone. I think uh, he's a secret weapon. If we really start to play him a lot more, I would really like to hear you talk about the defensive depth at safety, corner, etc. I mean, they got a lot right now. That's why um, it's they're going to have some tough decisions to make uh, come cut down time because you can't keep everybody. And we'll see who's, who makes the official roster and then, of course, the practice squad, too, because um, it's going to be tough. He said, give me your starters on offense and defense, given healthy. Also, Benjamin Victor, he looks ready for the NFL this year. I hope I'm right. Anyway, sorry for the long question. I really appreciate you. Thanks for being a Raven fan and someone I can really look at every day and watch good content. Oh, man, I appreciate that, man. Uh, let's quiet the haters this year, and uh, let's see Lamar have another MVP season, and let's see what if the goalposts get moved. <laughs> Where the goalposts get moved to now. And like my guy Hollywood Brown in Baltimore, I'm out. And then he said, P.S., please pay Lamar before the Miami Dolphins guarantee him 300 mil. And uh, <laughs> anyway, man. Um, whew. Uh, yeah, Benjamin Victor. We'll see about him too, man. Again, a, a wide receiver is... It's a big competition right now. And then especially as of right now, Devin DuVernay being out of practice, that gives everybody else an opportunity to show their stuff. Everybody else an opportunity to step up. Um, 
And uh, back to the the DB conversation um, and the starters uh, at defensive back and safety and stuff. Ravens, I, I love the depth right now. I love the depth. Like right now, our safeties, I got Chuck Clark, I got Marcus Williams, I got Kyle Hamilton, you got Geno Stone, you got Tony Jefferson. You got like a sort of a mix, like a hybrid guy with Brandon Stevens because he could play some corner too. You got a mix, sort of a hybrid guy with R. Darius Washington, even though we haven't heard anything about him yet. Um, man, yeah, they haven't heard anything about R. Darius Washington yet this offseason. So I don't know. I don't know what's going on with him. Um, but they have a lot of depth right now in the secondary. Then, of course, that corner as well, and especially once Marcus Peters comes back healthy. They just have a lot of depth. So it's nice to have a lot of depth because you know the se- it's a long season and you need that depth to come through. Uh, they drafted uh, Demarion Williams and Jalen Amore Smith, so that helps them that much more, getting some young guys in. It's just they signed Kyle Fuller. Uh, Marlon Humphrey, he missed a chunk of last season, but he's obviously healthy now doing his thing. So we got a lot of look, a lot to look forward to uh, in the secondary. A lot to look forward to. Um, I wish the Ravens could like keep everybody. So they, they that would be the ultimate stay ready so you ain't got to get ready, but unfortunately they can't. Next question came from Thomas Gaming Center. He said, hey, Graven, hope you and the fam are well. Before I begin, I'm sorry, it might be a lot for you. I honestly feel we need a physical guy out wide. We have a speedy receiver in Prochet and Duvernay. Mm, Prochet not a speedy receiver. He, he, he got a little faster, though. He ain't a speedy receiver, though. Uh, he said a receiver with hands like Diggs and Bateman and Wallace, but we need a physical receiver like Moss and Evans. Randy Moss wasn't physical. Mike Evans is. Randy Moss wasn't physical, though. Randy Moss was speedy. He was just, he was crazy, though. That dude could jump out of the gym. He was crazy, man. Anyway, he said, but who would you think would be that physical guy out of the remaining free agents? Thank you and have a great day and big trust all the way. Out of the remaining free agents? Ooh. Out of the remaining free agents? Uh, I I can't think of nobody off the top of my head out of the remaining free agents as far as physical. If I had to, I mean, before before it would have been Julio. But because Odell Beckham Jr., he's not like he's not physical. He's more finesse. But I mean, he's a really good receiver, but he's not physical like that. Um, T.Y. Hilton is not physical. Um, who else is out there? Uh, yeah, I, I, I can't think of nobody off the top of my head. Uh, but this is why my preference was always for trading for somebody. The conversation. Next question came from my boy Rodell. He said, my guy, good to see you doing what you do best. Haven't sent a question in maybe two or three months, but you know I'm still locked in. Uh, keep being you and carrying the flock. Oh, oh no, the, the flock would be way too heavy for me to carry. So that, I couldn't do that. But anyway, he said, now before we have this convo, I have to say that there is no hate here. Just trying to have an unbiased, clear mind and find answers. Oh, and I'm sorry. Oh, if, 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 if he started off like that. Let's see what he's about to say. So we pretty much always say that the success of our Baltimore Ravens start from the top down, right? Well, if this is indeed true, why don't the why don't the praise uh, recently a sub asked if Harb should be let go if we fall short of the Super Bowl? Why is that the first thing we think of? Why isn't it how much would another Super Bowl ring enhance Harbaugh and the Baltimore Ravens legacy? Here's the thing. Everyone, and I mean everyone in the world, has flaws. No one is perfect. With that said, we cannot continue to give one man praise when there are approximately 52 on the on the team uh, about another 10 or so on the practice squad and who knows how many in the front office again no hate lamar is the engine of this team we all know this we go as he goes but that essentially most teams especially the top 10 imagine no mahomes no brady no rogers no burrow no stafford like literally what was Bengals and rams record before they got those two qbs but back to, back to the point as i said before while an engine by itself holds value you still need the rest of the parts to complete the car while lamar jackson gets disrespected for just about everything he does he also receives all the praise for everything baltimore does again i know he is the mvp of the team but most qbs are the leaders and most important of and the most important position like I mentioned, if it all starts from the top, then we should start there. Not just with blame, but praise too. The question I would prefer is what would a Super Bowl win mean for Baltimore? We know what a loss would mean, but let's dissect the positive. First, we'd have to credit Steve Bishotti, EDC, and the rest of the staff for, for putting together a Super Bowl winning team. Harbs would have done it again and would rightfully deserve his credit. Whether we agree with his play calling or not, he would have done something right and led his team to the promised land. Good old Greg Roman would have almost made it back. And the same applies. He must have put the offense in the right position to succeed. Then our MVP and the 
players should be acknowledged for putting forth their best effort in delivering the chip. As I said, if it starts from the top down, not only blame, but praise has to as well. Uh, Bishotti has to spend money and leave the 2001 away in the past. EDC has to give Roman and McDonald the playmakers they need in order for those coordinators to succeed. If the coordinators have all the tools they need, it's no excuses, which would then only help and make Harb's job easier. Harbaugh would then have to learn from his mistakes, but also continue to be himself. He should get the final say, and his experience should lead him the right way. If all these components are aligned well, then coaches coach and players play our players would then have to execute the game plan it's that simple so going into the season and this season only i ask the flock to have a clear mind give this whole organization a fresh slate for this one season and hold everyone accountable we win together we lose together <laughs> and he said flock on three. One, two, three. so that's a uh that's a, a, a fun question and and a fun conversation and er, everybody there's so many different moving parts uh, when it comes to a football team, um, obviously, like you mentioned, you got the owner, you got the GM, you got the head coaches, got coordinators, got players, got all, all sorts of assistant coaches and whatnot. It, it, it takes every, and especially to win a Super Bowl, because we know it is extremely hard. It's extremely hard to win a Super Bowl. Um, we do talk about a lot of stuff, like like you mentioned, uh, Lamar. He gets a lot of praise. He gets a, a whole lot of praise. You are a thousand percent right about that. And with Harbaugh, um, there's a lot of critique that happens with John Harbaugh. Um, but I think one of the biggest reasons that that is for is for how Lamar was ushered in and how it went down. Um, because with Harbaugh, we know it, it wasn't looking good. He's getting ready to be on his way out. And it was looking like, ooh, yikes. Then Lamar came in and Harbaugh was like, thank goodness. <laughs> we, did, we did it. We got one. <laughs> we got one. Um, and, and then, uh, so Lamar Jackson came in and, and he saved, he saved John Harbaugh. He saved the Ravens. Um, but it did take the, the coaching staff. It, it, obviously Lamar just didn't walk in the building. He wasn't alone and he wasn't just like, all right, Hey, I'm, I'm doing this thing now. I'm gonna do it my way. Y'all coaches don't bother me. I ain't got nothing to listen to y'all for what y'all can leave me alone. I, I'm, I got this. Obviously he wasn't doing that. The coaches, they, they came up with, they, they, they changed their whole game plan in the middle of the season. Uh, they became this, like, crazy run team, and they, it was just wild to see. Um, and they did their thing. So it, it, it takes everybody. Um, but I think where a lot of the frustration is, is patterns. It is, is patterns. Um, and, again, is John Harbaugh a bad coach? No. He's not a bad coach. And like you said, everybody has their flaws. And that's John Harbaugh, Lamar Jackson, EDC, Bishotti, me, you, everybody. Everybody got their flaws. Um, but a lot of it is, one of my questions is, are, and, and I love how you talked about accountability. Because I love that. I love that. We had a uh, a long conversation early going into this offseason about accountability, uh, everybody needing to be held accountable from the top to the bottom. Um, I forgot what the video was called, but I, I will never forget it because we talked about Steve Bashotti, We talked about EDC. We talked about Harbaugh. We talked about Lamar. We talked about Greg Roman. We talked about previous defensive coordinator. Wink Martin that we just talked about how everybody needs to be held accountable. It is so important in order for anybody, not just the Ravens, but anybody to have success in whatever you're doing. If you have things that you do great, awesome, great job. Keep doing those things great. But if you have things that you know you need to improve on, fix them. Do, or, or do what you can to fix them. We're never going to quite fix everything because we're imperfect people. But do what you can. Try. And don't play the blame game like, oh, this because of this. Oh, this because of this. Oh. Take accountability. It's very important. So I, I, I completely agree. What? yeah, everything starts from the top to the bottom. It does. Um, but we just, we want there to be no excuses for anybody and we want everybody to be provided uh with a legitimate shot to be their best this is why for me i 
y'all know how I felt about the whole the wide receiver thing, and not even just this year, but for years. I'm like, hey, let, let's really get Lamar something, something. Let's get him something, something special, something significant. Let's get him something so we can really see the best Lamar. With the coaching staff, it's like, hey, because uh, I feel like the coaching staff, they get a lot of excuses. There's, oh, injuries, oh, COVID, uh, this, that, and third. But I feel like with Lamar, a lot of people look at him and they don't give him excuses. They don't give him excuses. He said, oh, no, Lamar, that, that's it. And it's like he, he can only do so much. And again, another thing, too, um, and this I know this kind of going left, but even with the money, it's people saying, oh, Lamar, he should, he should take less. He should take less money. Lamar not the GM. Look, Lamar is not the, the cap manager. That, no, that, ain't, that ain't his job. His job is to get his bread. His job is to get his money. So why should he suffer financially for a job that ain't that's not even his? Well, that's that's just a little little side note. But um, it does it does certainly take everybody. So nobody is blameless. Um, nobody is not at fault. Uh, everybody shares some some type of blame somewhere. Um. But we just we just want better, man. That's it. I think when it comes down to it, uh, we just want better um, from everybody. Uh, but not everybody has the same level of power as other people do. And that's where I think that's where it is sort of the, the sort of blame and the praise it differentiates. Because not everybody has the same power. Not everybody can call the same shots as all the people that you named. So I think that's that's where stuff starts to sort of separate a bit uh, when it comes to the blame and the praise. Next question came from my guy BB. He said, as we are watching all of this unfold with Deshaun Watson, I applaud the NFL for pushing the decision to further punish for detrimental behavior. The judge even said that it was uh, predatorial behavior. With that said, Deshaun will be made an example of. In the past, leniency for offenders that violate other than Ray Rice have had it easy when it comes to punishment for their actions. These 1% athletes are role models, spokespeople, and representatives for their highly touted organization. They have a responsibility outside football also. I hope to see justice for not only the victims, but also for us fans that just want a clean NFL. Thanks again for the channel, fam. And like Deshaun Watson won't be week seven against the Ravens. I'm out. Whew. That is, um, mm, that part where you said, uh, you just want a clean NFL. Ooh, that is a, that's tough. That's tough because NFL is a very dirty business. Um, but you just, you just want people to do the right thing, which I can understand. You want people to do the right thing. Uh, you want people to make good and, and better decisions um, because, yeah, they, they are at players. They are in a public spotlight. The, the owners and the GMs, not so much, not as not nearly as much as the players, because the players are like put on front street. But the owners and the GMs and whatnot um, and the coaches, the coaches, uh, they, they can get put on front. street. But the players are the ones that are out there on front street the most. Um, those are the ones that are in the public eye the most. Um, but everybody, uh, you would hope everybody would do their part to do the right thing. Uh, but unfortunately, n not everybody is like that. Next questions came from my guy, man, you will. He said, what's up, Engraven? Shout out for Mexico. We're all wondering when Lamar will sign his contract to get his money. And even though I made a vid on it joking about it, it seems that until it's done, uh, we will know. But what if Lamar takes less? Let's say 35 mil for eight years. Oof, he would never. 35, ooh, 35 mil, and Kyler just got 46.1 for eight years? Ooh, yuck, that's a, that's a nasty deal. But he said, let's say 35 mil for eight years under the clause that if in two to three years, the Baltimore Ravens must give Lamar Jackson weapons or they have to give him the rest of his money fully guaranteed. So, man, so this 35 mil for eight years wouldn't even be fully guaranteed? Ooh, that would be, that would be a yucky contract. Yucky. Um, he said another question regarding Mr. Jackson. When he is paid, what do you see the media saying about him? More slander or well-earned cash? Uh, it all depends on what media you're talking about. Um, but the, the, the slander ain't going nowhere. That, that's never going to go anywhere for Lamar Jackson. That is going to be with him his entire career. From start to finish, it ain't going nowhere. And that's, that's the sad truth. Because um, 
nothing that he does is, is ever going to be good enough. Nothing. Um, but then the other question was about the dogs in the wide receiver room. Uh, is the game is the game against the Saints, and we need a first down to get the drive uh, for our winning touchdown going. Bateman is double covered. The Mandrews dropped a crucial catch that would have given us the first down on their 15. Instead, it's fourth and eight on our, from our 30. Lamar says, I'll go for what a minute 30 left in the fourth quarter and one timeout. Open formation, and he throws to a 6'4", 200-pound wide receiver that catches the ball through a defensive PI and gets us the first down and gets out of bounds. Everyone celebrates the catch, and the announcers doesn't believe that Benjamin Victor did a vet play, not even hardball. The Saints think, oh, it was a flip. Luke, was it? Uh, he does the same catch in the end zone to win the game two plays later, and no one believes we have dogs in our wide receiver room. Proche is one. Wallace, Devin Williams, Duvernay, Bateman, they're all hungry to prove they are it and just want the shot to prove it. Uh, bringing in a vet can help, but who is out and doesn't get reps? Uh, Lamar knows he has some dogs at wide receiver, but does Greg Roman? Does Harbaugh? Do us Ravens fans know we have them? If you don't think so, then channels 3, 7, 13, 16, and 81 have something to tell you on the field. And we're going to see. We're going to see. They certainly got a lot to prove, like you said. Uh, and we'll see if they end up suiting up to prove it. Next question came from my guy Isaac. He said, Angry Raven, hope all is well with you and the team. Keep it clean. I got two questions, but I'll keep the first one brief. Which came first? Project Pat, the fullback or the defensive lineman? Defensive lineman. He was tr transferred to the fullback. Uh, or converted, whatever you want to say. Uh, number two, there's been talk of a lot of players to switch positions in a similar way of Pat Ricard. Likely could be a wide receiver. Malik Harrison could be an outside linebacker. Brandon Stevens could be a nickel cornerback guy. My question is whether or not there is precedent for Hobbs and his staff converting players' positions, and do you think any of these changes could actually happen, or is it all just some smoke to keep us entertained through the wastelands of what the offseason was? No, there's, there's validity to all of this stuff. Like, Malik Harrison, outside linebacker, yeah, because they got such little depth at outside linebacker. Brandon Stevens, he he was all over the field last year. He was at safety, he was at corner, he was doing all that. So yeah, I don't think that it's it's not just talking. That's all real. This question came from my boy Flirt Nowinski. He said, "What's good? Uh, I, I hope all is well with you and yours as always." I was hoping to meet you at the practice. I couldn't find you though. LOL. Got my Lamar Jackson jersey signed. That was sweet. But hot take: everybody hates Lamar and blame him for everything. But I feel some players that left will find out the grass isn't always greener. Could Hollywood and OBJ make a Ravens return after finding out things aren't what they seem? No, I, I don't think Hollywood uh, will will ever be back uh, with the Ravens. Uh, and I don't think Orlando Brown Jr. will be either. Um, they both wanted out uh, for different reasons. Orlando Brown Jr. because he knew Ravens weren't going to pay him. They just paid Ronnie Stanley. Uh, Hollywood, he was not a fan of the offense. So, and they came out publicly with their stuff multiple times. And they, so I, I, I don't see them ever coming back. Uh, he said, we all know Orlando Brown Jr. said pu publicly he owes Lamar some money when he gets paid. But everybody in the NFL is saying Orlando Brown Jr. isn't what they thought he was in KC aside from the money. I think Hollywood might fall into that same place in Arizona, but that's just me. Not unless Kyler makes a huge, ridiculous jump. Also, another year of being so close, but Debo and DK signed, so it's over. Soon we will hear in a few weeks how we were one pick away from getting both of them. <laughs> you ain't lying, boy. And like OBJ will be when they don't give him that LT money, I'm out. Next question came from my boy Matthew. He said, Hey, Raven, hope you and your family are well. I've noticed a lot of fans, as we know, are anti-Greg Roman. Mind you, I have my doubts too, but they seem to also have their mind made up that Lamar is anti-Greg Roman too. I don't think that's the case. It's almost assumed in the fans' eyes like Lamar don't like Greg Roman's system uh, in the way wide receivers or the media don't. Uh, however, Lamar has never criticized play calling, never called out the system, and never argued with Roman. No, he, he, the thing that he said was they know our place. They know our place. And then when asked about Greg Roman, um, he said Greg Roman was cool. Uh, and by the, by, by the body language, it looked like Lamar was just like, I'm going to just say this and whatever. And then he was like, hey, he's cool, but it's up to the people upstairs. Um, but anyway, continuing. He said... Uh, I think this may shock people, but I think Lamar loves Greg Roman in his offense. He won an MVP, had the number one scoring offense in the past, and had it tailored to him. I don't think it was tailored to him. It was tailored to running the football and tailored to Greg Roman. But anyway, he said, maybe we need to accept the fact that while we can add new wrinkles with T. Martin and the new coaches, Roman is here to stay, and mainly because Lamar wants it that way. And he said, don't shoot the messenger. Who knows, man? Who knows what goes on behind the scenes, how Lamar uh, really feels about Greg Roman, if he's feeling him or if he's not feeling him. Um, I just hope that this offense this year, they get the most out of everybody, uh, that they really maximize the talent that's on this team. 
uh, whether it's proven talent that we know about already or it's talent that is unproven. And I just really hope they get the most out of everybody and just play people to their strengths. Yeah, this feels like a dream. Shout out to Graven.